around the world, in basically every country, in the wake of the COVID crisis and the supply crunch afterwards, nearly every advanced economy has experienced inflation. Understandably, nearly every public in those nations has not liked it and expressed their frustration, often by voting against incumbents. Now, Donald Trump is with it enough still, I think, to understand those basic facts. So he has been constantly railing against inflation, trying to blame it on the Biden and Harris administration. But if you listen to what he suggests actually doing about it, it just makes no sense. On my first day back in the Oval Office, I will sign an executive order directing every cabinet secretary and agency head to use every tool and authority at their disposal to defeat inflation and to bring consumer prices rapidly down. We'll do it very rapidly. We're going to have 10 to 20 percent tariffs on foreign countries that have been ripping us off for years. We're going to charge them 10 to 20 percent to come in and take advantage of our country because that's what they've been doing for nothing. Okay, did you catch that? This is his one central inflation fighting policy proposal. Enormous tariffs on every imported good. In other words, a, a sales tax on stuff that already costs a lot. Clothes, iPhones, you name it. It would increase the cost of those goods. Yesterday, after a round of golf and a chat with the My Pillow guy, because of course, Trump tried again. He stepped out of his Bedminster, New Jersey summer home to point and gawk at a box of Cheerios and other grocery items, again, without articulating any actual <laughs> coherent plan to bring down the price of those items. In fact, economists say that what passes for so-called Trumponomics could actually cause inflation to spike. Now, today, in marked contrast, Kamala Harris unveiled her economic agenda, and it is a tangible set of policies focused on lowering consumer costs. I will work to pass the first ever federal ban on pr price gauging on food. I'll lower the cost of insulin and prescription drugs for everyone. By the end of my first term, we will end America's housing shortage by building three million new homes and rentals that are affordable for the middle class. Under my plan, more than 100 million Americans will get a tax cut, and we will do this by restoring two tax cuts designed to help middle class and working Americans. The earned income tax credit <laughs> and the child tax credit. Independent Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont calls the vice president's new economic agenda bold and popular, and he joins me now. Um, Senator, obviously, uh, campaigns usually have a while to get started. This one is a, in a completely different category. Uh, they're kind of building the airplane while, while flying it. And I think there's some real question about <laughs> when, the, when the meat got put on the bones, right? When you're saying, okay, here's the substantive stuff. Here's the policy. We're putting out the papers and speeches, what it would look like. What's your reaction to what was unveiled today? Well, I think given the fact that she has been a candidate for only three weeks, uh, I think she's doing really, really well in a whole lot of ways. I think what she laid out today was a strong, progressive agenda, obviously, in the weeks and months to come. I think she's going to add more specificity to some of these proposals, and she's going to add to it. But, Chris, I have always believed that good policy is good politics. And what she is talking about today is reining in the outrageously high cost of prescription drugs. That's enormously popular, the right thing to do. She's talking about building three million units of affordable housing at a time when we have a housing crisis in Burlington, Vermont, Los Angeles, California, and every place in between. We got to lower the cost of housing in America. She's talking about ending medical debt so that a quarter of the people in this country who have cancer do not have to deplete their savings or go bankrupt. Uh, so I think the and she's talking about controlling the cost of groceries when we know that there's been massive concentration of ownership in that industry. They spike prices up and going after them is exactly the right thing to do and very good politics. I want to talk about the housing because it's been very striking to me. Um, the first campaign ad, one of the first campaign ads in the Harris campaign mentioned two issues, prescription drugs, cost of housing. 
uh, talking about sort of using sort of policy mechanisms to cap rental increases for big, big corporate landlords, mm -hmm. talking about building new supply today. In my time covering Democratic politics, I have never seen housing and the cost of housing more central in a presidential campaign than I've seen it just, I would say, in the, la in the first few weeks of the Harris campaign. Do, do you agree with that? I, absolutely. And, and I think many of us have been negligent in really perceiving the nature of the housing crisis yeah. in America. I got it now. I mean, I've been out in every place I go, Chris. People say we can't yeah. find affordable housing, homelessness, 600,000 people. So I think she's absolutely right to talk about that issue as well as the high cost of prescription drugs. There was an interesting kind of ideological tug of war that was happening in that in this period where the, the, the President Joe Biden said he's not going to seek uh, the nomination. Kamala Harris uh, became the nominee about what her economic vision would be, and particularly some of it centered on uh, Lena Khan, who's uh, uh, the head of the FTC and has been very, very aggressive in fighting antitrust, right. you know, big conglomerates. Do, do you feel like you have a better sense of that? This this seemed to me a, a full-throated endorsement of Lena Khan's work at the FTC of going after concentration in, in big corporations. Well, Chris, as you know, there were some Democratic donors, big money interests, who don't yep. like the work that Lena Khan is doing. I happen to think she's the best FTC chair that we have had for a very, very long time. And if Kamala Harris is going to be successful in taking on corporate greed, in taking on concentration of ownership, she's going to need somebody like Lena Khan at the head of the FTC. Um, finally, uh, Senator, do you think that this, the, the, the price issue still sort of crowds everything out in people's perception of the economy the way it did, say, six months ago, a year ago? Well, inflation is going down, but I think especially when you walk into a grocery store, uh, people are legitimately concerned. Uh, and by the way, Chris, one of the other issues that she talked about today was the expansion of the child tax credit and making it permanent. Yep. Uh, in the uh, American Rescue Plan, we, by doing that, cut childhood poverty in America by over 40 percent. One provision in one bill. You make that permanent. We deal with the outrage that in the richest country in the world, we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country. So paying attention to the needs of parents and kids is, is enormously important. And I'm glad she's doing that. Senator Bernie Sanders, thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate it.